Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again. Now, if you remember the last version of Cockspray I played, this is roughly what it looked like. It was an Ascendant with Deadeye and Berserker nodes, giving you plenty of leech, uh, projectile spear pierce. It was largely based around scaling projectiles, max pierce, and lots of prod speed, and it was Quill Rain cast on crit. The three spells I used was Spark, EK, and Freeze Pulse, and it worked really well for clear speed and really well for mapping. Where it falled short was sometimes single target DPS and it was a bit squishy at times, as well as potentially inconsistent because of needing charges from Frenzy and quite often not having power charges up either. So with that said, since Sion got gutted, I have tried to make a new version of Coxpray, and this is now what it looks like. It is now an assassin. Now the main reason for it now being an assassin is because Sion no longer has the permanent leech that it used to always have. So you've got to find a different way to leech and different ways of scaling everything in general. So what I ended up doing was going assassin for a large amount of crit and also for poison scaling, which is quite substantial thanks to the assassin. So we based our entire character around physical spells, that is EK and Bladefall, and general damage scaling. So just a bit of uh, spell damage, fizz damage, chaos damage, for that sort of region that I'm currently doing. There's barely any proj damage whatsoever, so it's not going to be scaling just EK, but it is scaling the Bladefall, the EK, and as well as that, also the Glacial Cascade that I'm using. And there's still quite a lot to figure out about this character, but so far I'm enjoying it quite a lot, and it feels very strong in terms of single target DPS, clear speed, and overall safety and survivability. Largely because I'm currently running a Blasphemy Temp Chains, since I feel with my DPS I can afford to, and Temp Chains actually helps your poison stacking quite substantially as well. So I have that, paired with Cosprey's giving me permanent um, Temp Chainsing, basically on everything, even curse immune monsters, and then I've also got a caster and damage taken uh, Warlord's Mark, so whenever I'm in trouble I will of course be leeching thanks to Warlord's Mark on the monster, since I can now dual curse. On top of that, the Atsiri Flask I'm currently running is the entire source of my leech, pretty much, because it gives me quite a lot of chaos and fizz leech or converts a lot of my fizz into chaos, which then gives me a lot of leech. And thanks to having quite a lot of chaos scaling through um, the ascendancy, and also through the added chaos gem I'm currently using, which I'll show you the entire setup soon, it's actually very reliable leech. So whenever the amethyst flask or its series flask is up, I'm pretty much not going to die because leech is instant. So between that and the warlord's mark, my leech and survivability feels really good, and I'm going to be aiming for around 5k life on this build, because I want this build, as opposed to the last one, to be a good overall build for everything. I'm talking red maps, core Malachi's, Uberit series, not just map clear in general. So as you can see, just like endgame bosses right now melt away, and it's also pretty safe, thanks to the double curse. Uh, especially temp chains, and just the speed of which we kill them, as well as the knockback from the uh, barrage arrows, whatever, king of the hill is what you'd call it, that's right. So even on an enfeeble map like this, uh, Mervo dies pretty goddamn quickly, and when you really have all your damage set up and going, it becomes quite insane. There is of course though, as you can see, kind of a stutter happening. Now that's not on my end, uh, for me, it's actually very smooth, and the FPS is pretty much never tanking, but while streaming it, thanks to all the poison and certain microtransactions, sometimes, I think, we do get some stutter lag. So it's not just an FPS drop, it's a big old stutter that kinda doesn't make sense. Now, I do want to reiterate, that's not for me, as the person playing it, it's through the stream that the people watching are getting this stutter, and then even the recordings here. But playing it, if you have a decent enough computer, it shouldn't be that bad. It's not one of the most FPS heavy cast on crits, or builds in general that I've played and have experienced. 
But as you can see here, the uh, damage is really quite good on a single target, and you can even take on things like Atsiri. So far, this is just normal Atsiri. I do think I should be able to take out Uber, but that's to be seen. I've got quite a bit of things still to figure out for this character. I'm having a lot of fun playing it, and I think I will play it for at least a few more days, because uh, I've been really enjoying the playstyle so far, and how well it's performing. So I want to figure out everything about the build, all the correct gem slots, things may change as of this video, all the correct passive slots and all that, and I'll pass them on to you when I can. But for now, I'll show you what my current setup is in case you want to try and replicate it. The first thing I want to mention and show you is the sweet combination of Prophecy Weapon Effect paired with Stormcloud skin over your Quill Rain, which makes a pretty damn awesome looking skin. Stormcloud by itself isn't too bad, it looks kinda nifty, but combined with your prophecy weapon effect it looks really fancy. So I do recommend doing that if you wanna look as cool as this, and you do. But the character's gone through a lot of changes. Right now it's level 88 and I've done a lot of different gear changing and gem changing. Up until about 75 I was running a tabula with my 6-link setup. Upon 6-linking the bow I swapped it to there. Um, I was then wearing a belly of the beast up until about level 85. I just recently put on a cosprey and dropped the poison gem I was using in my 6-link setup. So a lot of things have changed, but in the current form we're running Barrage, Bladefall, Cast on Crit, EK, Added Chaos, and Glacial Cascade. If you don't have a 6-link, I would probably remove Glacial Cascade right now, but you could also remove Added Chaos. If you're playing Hardcore, I'd probably include a Life Leech gem instead of one of these two as well. But you can get away without the Life Leech gem, I feel, with the correct cast and damage taken and Mortal Call Warlord's Mark setup. We also have Increased Duration attached. Besides that, um, my 5-link was kind of getting wasted here. So I ended up just putting Barrage, Cast on Crit, Vulnerability, Increase Crit Strikes, and Power Charge on Crit. So just to start off a boss fight, I'll usually throw out a few Barrages from this setup, which will get my Vulnerability up. I'll have my Temp Chains going from Blasphemy Temp Chains all the time, so that'll be Double Curse. And I'll also get my Power Charges stacked really quickly, because otherwise my power charge generation all comes from this. 10% chance to gain a power charge on non-crit. That will keep you up all of the time, but at the start of a boss fight, it's a little slow to generate. It'll probably take you like three or four seconds to do so, just from your main setup, and that's a big DPS loss for those three or four seconds. Currently I'm running two volley fire threshold jewels, one here and one there. You can fit one in over here as well, and that's what I was going to do, which is why I took Acuity. Haven't yet taken it out, because it's still okay for accuracy and attack speed, but you can fit a third one in there. So I have two extra arrows here, because of the 50 decks, and two extra over here. On top of that, I also have two additional barrage projectiles from Rat's Nest. If I didn't have that, I'd probably want a third um, volley fire over here, but I can't even really tell what's the optim optimal amount. This seems to be like a lot of barrage projectiles. Less is probably okay as well. I don't know, who cares? Figure it out as you go yourself. For me right now, two seems to be okay, plus the enchant. Sustaining mana at the moment is mostly from one mana gained on hit here, and one mana gained on hit here. On top of that, I have one little mana leech node here, which only works and only take if you have the added chaos gem attached to your setup because without the added chaos gem your barrage does fucking zero damage meaning this will give you no mana back whatsoever so if you're not using added chaos this won't help you sustain mana at all ideally something like two mana gain on hit uh, from both or at least two from just one jewel because these can be divined to two uh, should sustain you in the end, maybe be a little uncomfortable on certain maps. Now, for auras, hatred of course, because that gives you a shitload of extra cold damage to both Bladefall and EK, and is a huge added layer of safety to your defenses, and as well as that I'm running Temper Chains on Blasphemy. You do want 20 quality there and 20 quality there, that makes it a lot better for radius and strength, or at least level 20 as well, is very important. 
Um, besides that, there's not too much else to mention. Currently running face breakers for the crit multi. If you can get a good curse on hit vulnerability pair of gloves, that would be insane, paired with the cosprays. But you don't even have to wear a cosprays. Like I said, belly of the beast, huge life defense there, gain, and you'll still have your temp chains blasphemy. You'll probably want a life leech gem for permanent leech, but I was surviving off just a Tsiri flask for a very long time. As you can see here, my chaos damage, about 500. Pop the Tsiri flask. That's a shitload of chaos that's going to be insta-leached, because I do have Valpact. Other things to mention are pretty much nothing. Uh, that's where you're getting all your crit from, as you should know by now. That's where you're getting all your scaling from for chaos damage, as you probably should know as well. The only real damage nodes we have on the tree are these here. A couple of ones over here as well. This one. And... Maybe that, I suppose, and then just general crit and crit multi from everywhere else. So as you can see, there's not much damage on the tree whatsoever. Any you can get from your jewels, uh, amulet, whatever, will be very beneficial. And besides that, I also have the flask nodes, druidic rat, and alchemist. So that gives me much stronger flasks and longer flasks. As you can see, about 7 seconds for an Ziri flask, because I also do have increased duration on my belt. Uh, I found a taste of hate off of one of the Tsiri runs I did, so I decided to put that on. Not sure it's entirely necessary. You could also try and fit a Vinktars into the build, but right now I'm just shocking manually with Vile Lightning Trap and running a Stib Knight plus a Quicksilver. That's about all I need to say for the build at this stage. There may be more coming in the future. I hope to take down things like Core Malachi and Uber Tsiri on it. I think it is doable. Double Core? Maybe not. We'll see. In any case, that's the current version of Cockspray I'm playing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.